Oh, thank goodness. Officer, please, come quickly. Bonjour, mademoiselle. How can I... Uh... It has become a madhouse. Madame has been shouting and cursing all morning. I've never seen her so angry. But what great luck to happen upon you. Please, try to remain calm. Uh, first, may I ask your name? We don't have time for that. Please, hurry. Mademoiselle, now we are here, I must insist on your name before I can continue any further. I am Officer Hercule Poirot. I am Elizabeth, but it is the maid servant that we must consider. Forgive me, officer, but are you new to the area? I stand out so obviously. I mean no offence, only I have not seen you before. This is a small town, and you learn everyone's faces very quickly. Very observant of you, mademoiselle. Oui, I was recently posted here from the city, and a good thing I am here now. Let us get to the bottom of this madness you speak of. There has been a theft at the house. Then I am exactly where I should be, n'est-ce pas? It is only one of Mademoiselle Angeline's most valuable bracelets taken from her room. Then its safe return is of the utmost importance. Madame Van den Bosch, the lady of the house, believes Florette is behind it. I'm afraid I do. I know Madame is confident of Florette's guilt, but she wouldn't do such a thing. Surely a burglar is responsible, as Mademoiselle believes. Merci, Mademoiselle. Your assistance has been invaluable. Some would say a lucky guess, I would say a moment of genius. Ah. Uh -huh. 
One set must be mine, leaving to find you. The other set must be Florette's. She was caught in the rain this morning. There is, sir. Luke. But he was called away from the house on a personal matter. Rahana, our cook, accompanied him. Merci, mademoiselle. Your assistance has been invaluable. of the puzzle are finally coming together. Magnifique. I should not be surprised by my own skills of deduction. What a revelation! Things are 
are beginning to become clearer. I have conducted my initial inspection of the house and grounds. It is now necessary for me to speak with those in the house. Of course. Thank you, officer. I'm sure Madame Van den Bosch will be happy to hear the police are investigating. Mademoiselle Elizabeth, I hope you are feeling less distressed now. I can assure you I shall find the guilty party and the bracelet. Thank you, officer. Yes, all I want is for Florette to be heard. Bien sûr. Rest assured, she will get the fair trial she deserves. I wonder if you could help me with some questions regarding the house. Of course. Whatever I can do to help. Excuse me, officer? The carving on the bench. Forgive me, I was not suggesting anything untoward. Oh, of course not. Yes, <laughs> I suppose there must be. Would you know the identity of the mysterious L and E? I'm afraid not. Perhaps they were old residents. A pair of star-crossed lovers, perhaps. Madame does not allow distracting staff relationships. Love is not something that can be harnessed so easily. That is Madame's rule, and I wouldn't want to be the one that challenges her on it. Merci, Mademoiselle. Your assistance has been invaluable. Who are you? You are not the commanding officer I requested. No, dear madame, I am Officer Hercule Poirot. I can assure you that I... This will simply not do. I sent Elizabeth to bring me a competent lawman. And that is what she has brought, madame. Now, I would like to continue my investigation. You understand correctly. It is my daughter's bracelet. It is a rather expensive piece. And valuable to your daughter, no doubt. It was a gift. Yes, it was from her late father, my husband, the Viscount. And it has not gone missing. It was stolen. I do not believe so. I know so. It was Florette, the maidservant. I knew I could not trust her. And why is that? Because I don't. I do not need to explain myself any further, especially to a measly officer. Hmm. Don't be ridiculous. I have told you who is guilty. If there had been a break-in, surely it would be your job to stop them. If it was the case, of course, madame. Although I cannot predict a burglar's movement. Perhaps then you have proved me right, and you aren't the competent officer I require. Merci, madame. You have been most helpful. Thank
Really, officer, you are wasting both your time and mine. Only if you are prepared to take Florette away. It is an offense to incarcerate someone without suitable proof of misdeeds. I must question Mademoiselle Florette to gather her version of events. If you will not do your duty and lock her up, then I must. She shall remain there, and I, the keyholder, until she is led from the room in handcuffs. And what is your point? May I ask of the subject? You may not. Honestly, your prying is getting on my last nerve. Merci, madame. You have been most helpful. Oh. 
What do you think you're doing in here? Who let you in? Mademoiselle Angeline, I presume. Allow me to introduce myself. I am Officer Hercule Poirot. An officer of the law? But what are you doing here? Don't you need to be chasing down the burglar? Your bracelet has gone missing. It is only correct. I speak with all members of the house and investigate the scene of the crime. Ah, if we must. Uh, merci. I will attempt to take up as little of your time as possible. Some rats stole my bracelet this morning. Even though it's clear someone has broken in, Maman refused to listen and blamed Florette. You sound very convinced it was taken by someone from outside of the house. My window was open when I returned. How else can you explain that? It must have been while I was down at breakfast with Elizabeth. She was with me all morning. Mademoiselle Elizabeth was with you until you discovered the bracelet was missing? She was. She woke me up later than usual. I washed and dressed, and we went down to the lounge for breakfast. It is of great value. Monet was no object to father. It was a gift from your father. I can only assume it holds great value to you also. Of course it does. What a silly thing to say. It's a good thing Maman had it insured with the others. You have been of great help to my investigation, mademoiselle. I will do everything I can to find the culprit and return your bracelet. Aha. Aha.
Another success. I never doubted myself. Things are beginning to become clearer. Magnifique. What a revelation. The longer you are here, the further the criminal goes with my bracelet. But by all means, fire away. Is one bracelet not enough? checked everywhere. You can ask Elizabeth if you don't believe me. It is only my bracelet that is missing. As I have stated, it is my duty to speak with every member of the house, and I would not want to have discovered a further missing piece later. How should I know? I returned to the room and father was face down on the floor. It must have been the burglar. So it is your father that is the subject. Isn't he handsome? I remember watching him sit for it. He kept looking across and smiling at me. <laughs> the artist was getting awfully angry at him. Mama never wants to talk about him. She says it's too hard, but she acts more like she doesn't even care he's gone. I'm sure that is not the case. It must have been very hard for her, for you both. I miss him every day. He always knew how to put a smile on my face. <laughs> I remember how much fun we would have, all three of us. In the summer, father and I would play hide and seek while maman read. She always helped me though whenever it was his turn to hide. I would stand in the gazebo, cover my eyes and count, and when I turned, he was nowhere to be seen. Maman would lower her book and flash a look towards his hiding spot. 
After I found him, he clapped and cheered as though I had won a gold medal. When I was hiding, it didn't matter where I was. He could never find me. I always thought I, I was an expert hider, but when I think back now, I know he was letting me win. He always said my smile was prize enough for him. He always knew just what to say. I am sure he would want you to be smiling today, even under such circumstances. You have been of great help to my investigation, mademoiselle. I will do everything I can to find the culprit and return your bracelet. Really, officer, you are wasting both your time and mine. Merci, madame. You have... Certainly, officer. When I left, madame was with Florette in there. Surely she would not have locked her in. It must have been an accident. Madame Vandenbosch should not be deciding her fate. Would you grant me access to speak with her? I would, sir, but I don't have the key. There is a spare somewhere, though. Oh, how awful the thought of her locked in there! Do you have any thoughts as to where I may find it? I'm sorry. Madame does not trust the staff with such knowledge, even me. Although I did overhear her once say it was hidden somewhere, close... Now I think of it, I don't recall seeing her memento tin. She holds her keepsakes from her father and other gifts or tokens in it. She has such a wonderful collection. She's very lucky. She normally keeps it close, but I didn't see it this morning. Merci, mademoiselle. Your assistance has been invaluable. Another success. I never doubted myself. Certainly, officer. Madame is the one with the refined taste. Angeline and I are much more partial to a simple love story. Aren't we all? Romeo and Juliet, the most famous of love stories. <laughs> I do enjoy it so. The passion, the romance. It gives me goosebumps just thinking about it. Madame has a copy, upstairs in the main hall. Merci, mademoiselle. Your assistance has been invaluable. Ah. 
Finally, it is unlocked. What exactly do you think you are doing? If I am to serve justice, I must be able to reach and talk with young Florette. The girl is guilty and shall pay the price for her crime. I shall see to that. If you wish to listen to her feeble attempts to explain herself, so be it. Everyone deserves to tell their side of the story, whether a feeble account or not. Mademoiselle Florette, I presume. Please, officer. I did nothing wrong. You can't take me away. Please relax, my dear. If you have done nothing wrong, you have nothing to worry about. But it is my duty to investigate all avenues. Ah bon? Relax. So you don't think I took the bracelet? As of this moment, I cannot say. But answering my questions honestly will certainly help your case either way. I didn't even know it was missing till I got accused of taking it. Madame was so angry. She wouldn't listen to me. There must be some reasoning behind her accusation. How could I have taken it? I've been in town most of the morning. I was even late coming back, then I was preparing breakfast. Rihanna, the cook is away, so I had to fetch breakfast for the house and prepare it all myself. How does she expect me to do that all on my own? From what I understand of Madame Van den Bosch, she would not have been best pleased you returned late for breakfast. Not best pleased? I thought she was going to batter me to death with a baguette. I hid in the kitchen and then tried to stay out of sight in the lounge until breakfast was over. Didn't want to put my head near her jaws while she was still hungry. Perhaps a brave move under the circumstances. And you did not go upstairs at all. Madame was singeing a hole in the back of my apron with her glare. I daren't have moved. I was too scared to blink the wrong way. Never mind stamping upstairs. I must just be slow, monsieur. My mother always said I um, moved like the snail. Maybe I was just happy to be out of the house. Now I am being accused of avoiding my duties? Mais enfin! Merci. I shall take everything you have told me into consideration. Thank you. 
Anything to show you I didn't do it. And madame, I need this job, monsieur. Merci. I... Oh. Some would say a lucky guess, I would say a moment of genius. I should not be surprised by my own skills of deduction. of the puzzle are finally coming together. I guess I would say a moment of genius. Certainly, officer. Why, yes, officer! I misplaced it after wiping a stain from Mademoiselle Angelique's sleeve at breakfast. You are a great detective. Hmm. You are not the first to say. Had she not noticed it herself, I imagine Madame would not allow even the smallest imperfection. It baffles me how she couldn't have. It was only luck that I spotted it before Madame, and a good thing I did. Madame is under a great deal of strain. It can't have been easy for her to lose her husband, raising Mademoiselle alone. She can be quick to anger. And this morning, it sounds as though it was such an occasion. It's not the first time I have had to stand and watch such treatment. I hate to see it. As I said, Madame hasn't had the easiest time. Madame's scolding of Florette this morning was the worst I have seen her temper. I wish she could see that Florette is just trying to do her best. Could there have been another reason for such a reaction? Madame was not happy Florette was late. All through breakfast, Madame was watching her with a piercing eye. 
but she's still learning the way. Merci, mademoiselle. Your assistance has been invaluable. The pieces of the puzzle are finally coming together. What a revelation! I should not be surprised by my own skills of deduction. Another success. I never doubted myself. Things are beginning to become clearer. Certainly, officer. The lounge? A package? Oui, it is quite hard to miss. Oh, how silly of me. I must have had my head in the clouds this morning. I'm sorry, I can't help you further. Besides the terrible rain? No. I woke, began my duties with Mademoiselle. I had already laid out a clean dress. I helped her into it and prepared her for the day before getting started on tidying her room as neat as a pin. And the bracelet was still there when you left the room for breakfast? I'm sure of it. I had it down before Mademoiselle Angeline. Merci, Mademoiselle. Your assistance has been invaluable. Some would say a lucky guess, I would say a moment of genius. Magnifique! Another success. I never doubted myself. Certainly, officer. How could I not be? 
I may not enjoy his other works, but how can one not be blown away by a story of two so deeply in love that they will risk everything just... Especially being able to draw similarities between Verona's star-crossed lovers to yourself and your dearest. But I hadn't told. Mademoiselle, I am an officer of the law. It is my duty to uncover the truth. Please, you cannot say anything to Madame. She is against staff relationships of any kind. In her eyes, a relationship between staff is nothing more than a distraction. But he means so much more to you. Oh, officer. I have found my soulmate. At first, it was nothing more than pleasantries around the grounds. But that quickly changed. I know it's not proper for a young lady to pursue a gentleman. But once I knew his feelings reciprocated my own, why shouldn't I have followed my heart? Love transcends professional and societal rules. The mere thought of him was enough to make me blush. But I knew that Madame would never give her blessing. If we wanted to continue, we would have to do so in secret. The summer evenings here are just so beautiful. I often find myself walking around the grounds after my daily duties are complete. And it was one such evening that Luke was waiting for me at the gazebo. He looked ever so handsome. And the poem he had prepared. He had barely started reading and I was already a blubbering mess. Standing there beneath the warm glow of the falling sun, he asked for my hand and I gave him my heart with no hesitation. Oh, I'm sorry, officer. I've been chattering on for so long. You have much more pressing matters than to listen to me rambling aimlessly. One should never apologize for such a charming and bewitching story of love, but you are correct. While the culprit still eludes us, my work is not yet complete. Merci, mademoiselle. Your assistance has been invaluable. Anything to show you I didn't do it. And Madame, I need this job, Monsieur. Yes, another thing on my to-do list. I'm afraid it's not in the same condition as when I picked it up. At whose request? It was a favor for Lizzie. I didn't mind having to get it. Merci. I shall take everything you have told me into consideration. Really, officer, you are wasting both your time and mine. If you have something to ask, officer, I suggest you stop wasting my time further and just get on with it. me? I will not be happy until I see her sufficiently punished. I am glad you have finally come to your senses and have seen her guilt. It is challenging at times, I will admit, 
But I can assure you the Van den Bosch name is as strong and prevalent as it has always been. I have tried my best to provide for Angeline, although sometimes she may not see it that way. She is not to know about what we have discussed. It is my burden to carry. You are accepting the hand you have been dealt and raising a fine young mademoiselle. That is all that can be asked of you. And you have done nothing but bother my staff and my family. I cannot stand here any longer and listen to this second-rate officer speaking such drivel. The longer you are here, the further the criminal goes with my bracelet. But by all means, fire away. Maman is never happy with anything these days. Also, Florette does have a habit of not doing things exactly how Maman wants them done. And how does she react when she sees Florette not doing things the correct way? Maman has a temperament of a kicked cat. Florette has often been on the wrong side of it. Uh, that is how she responded today? She was shouting at her, and when Florette would not admit she took the bracelet, Maman really lost her temper. I have not seen her that angry before. You have been of great help to my investigation, mademoiselle. I will do everything I can to find the culprit and return your bracelet. Oh. of the puzzle are finally coming together. What a revelation! Think 
things are beginning to become clearer. Anything to show you I didn't do it. And Madame, I need this job, Monsieur. She never used to be such a witch. When the Viscount was alive, she was much nicer. He was the head of the house, he gave the orders, and he treated us right. I would have gone long ago, Monsieur. But my family can't afford for me to be picky about my employment. I was not aware you were supporting your family, and at such a young age. Papa lost his job at the factory just before he left for good, so Mama had to work even more. I was old enough, so I went to work. When I joined the Vandenbosch house, the Viscount was very kind. I didn't think he would care, but he wanted to help. He gave me some extra in my first pay pack, enough to keep the landlord from kicking Mama out at least. No one had ever been that nice before. I didn't know what to say, but all he wanted me to do was work hard for her. He even let me to go home and visit Mama and my brothers at Christmas with a food parcel from the kitchen. Mama said she had never seen so much food. It's always been hard for her. Even before he left for good, Papa wasn't around much, and even when he was, we both wished he wasn't. My brothers were too young to remember what he was like, I hope. When I walked in Mama's house, Everything seemed so much smaller. I must have got too used to the size of this house. I swear, you could fit our house in just this lounge. We didn't have much, but we didn't want for much. It was simple and it was home. The valuables in the house do not determine the love it shares. Someone should tell Madame that. Not that she'd listen anyways. I will uncover the truth of what happened today, Mademoiselle. That, I promise you. Merci. I shall take everything you have told me into consideration. Certainly, officer. And the bracelet. Everything will be revealed in good time. Would you be so kind as to gather everyone in the lounge? Of course. Merci, Mademoiselle Elizabeth, for gathering everyone. Will Madame Vandenbosch be joining us shortly? She stormed past me not long ago, and I have not seen her return. Very well. Under usual circumstances, I would wait. But I think we have spent enough time on this matter, n'est-ce pas? We shall have to proceed without her. This morning started like any other. My usual ordinary patrol. Until I was approached by Mademoiselle Elizabeth about a suspected burglary and a missing bracelet. A crime I've been falsely blamed for! That I shall come to. I began my investigation outside, but it was not long before I realized there were no signs of an intruder. 
So I turned my focus to those in the house. You. Florette, your time here at the house has not always been the easiest for you, shall we say. I do what Madame tells me. And to the highest standard, I presume. Madame's standards are very high. I do my best. And you would at least expect fair treatment for the work, not to be spoken to in such a cruel and vicious way. Monsieur? I refer to how poorly Madame Van den Bosch treats you. You are at her beck and call, and she does nothing but belittle you. That is Maman you're talking about. Just wait until... It is nothing but the truth I speak, Mademoiselle. Mm. All the while, Mademoiselle stands by and does not even notice such cruelty. That must have angered you. I... Perhaps you thought it was time they deserved some retribution. Stop trying to put words in her mouth! I am merely giving her a voice, one that has been silenced for so long. Maybe I do think she deserves it. She's had the world handed to her on a plate, and the likes of me get nothing. A motive begins to rear its head. You're just trying to get me to admit to something. Well, I've done nothing. Uh, allow me to finish. I am sure you will want to hear what follows. Let us return to this morning. I was only trying to help Lizzie. You must have known how Madame would have reacted to your late return, especially with her prior treatment of you. She's angry at whatever I do. But nonetheless, you were willing to help a colleague, a friend, knowing what the repercussions could be. And that show of loyalty to your friend has been the thing that proved your innocence. Monsieur? Because of such willingness to help, you are delayed in town, meaning you had no viable way of taking the bracelet from Mademoiselle Angeline's room. There was simply no opportunity. I told you! Maybe now Madame will believe me. It is evidence not even she can ignore, which then leads us to Mademoiselle Elizabeth. Mademoiselle Elizabeth, you have been with the Van den Bosch family for quite some time now, correct? That is correct. You have grown close with both ladies of the house and your fellow members of the house staff, would you say? Of course. And I certainly hope they feel the same. Officer, please. Elizabeth, what is he talking about? I am referring to the lengths Mademoiselle Elizabeth has gone to to remain in your maman's employment. It is Madame's house. She can enforce whatever rules she chooses. Even if they are going against the very nature and cornerstone of man, to love. I still do not understand. Perhaps that is best for everyone. It is neither my place nor my want to make this situation any more awkward than it needs to be. Oh, thank you. Besides, it was not that story that cleared Mademoiselle Elizabeth's name. Rather, Florette's. Florette's? But she was not here for most of the morning. But when she was, more precisely while preparing the table in the lounge, she noted that, against regularity, you arrived alone for breakfast, without Mademoiselle Angeline by your side. 
I'm not sure I understand what you mean. It means that I found myself with two suspects with potential motives. But with a lack of opportunity, I was left with only one. Mademoiselle Angeline. You can't believe I would hide my own bracelet. I have nothing to say. How dare you speak to me like that? You have no idea what you are talking about. You can't actually believe I would hide my own jewelry. If you didn't, explain to me how your memento tin with the bracelet inside came to be lodged inside the chimney of your bedroom fireplace. You have no proof I put it there. Besides you being the only one in the room alone, even after finding the bracelet, I still did not know why you had done it. Until I contemplated why Madame was selling so many heirlooms and art. You had no right to snoop through our house in the first place. When it is part of my investigation, I have every right, mademoiselle. The unpaid bills and final notice from the telephone company. Maman can do what she wants with her art. That means nothing. But when there was no more art to sell, what then? You could not risk her taking your father's bracelet and selling it. So, you staged a burglary pretending it had been taken, preventing her from selling it. Then you stood back as the innocent Florette paid the price. She didn't think about me at all. She was going to take my bracelet and sell it off. It would have just ended up on some old wrinkly wrist. I didn't think Mama would blame her. I didn't think she would do anything. But she did. And somehow that evidently didn't cross your mind. When Madame returns, you shall have it all to explain. Maman can't know what I've done. She will be furious. But Mademoiselle Florette will be proved innocent. And that is what is important. No crime has been committed. So I see no reason why this should continue any longer. It is time you considered the consequences of your actions. And now, you must face them head on. Maman, you're home. Of course I am. And I've brought someone that will bring some order to this chaos. Major, I can assure you, I have this situation under control. From what I have heard, you are far from it. The missing bracelet has been found, and the guilty party has been identified. I am well aware that the maid servant was behind it all. And yet, I see her standing as free and innocent as you and me. I am sure Madame Van den Bosch has informed you of her suspicions, but I'm afraid it was merely speculation. Excuse me? After conducting a full investigation, the evidence and facts led me to deduce... I certainly hope you are not accusing my daughter of... 
I'm sorry, Maman, he's right. Florette is innocent. I just wanted to show you. Shh, girl. I will not have you guilted into taking the blame for that sticky-fingered girl. Perhaps it would benefit you to remember you are nothing more than a simple officer of the law. Officer Poirot. A word. Madame van den Bosch was forced to make her way to inform me, alone, I might add, of the goings-on at the house today. Major, with all due respect, she was impeding the investigation. This may be how some officers act in the city, but here we show respect to our citizens. You are an officer of the law and should act as such. Insubordination like this will not be tolerated. As the ranking officer, I have conducted my investigation and... Ranking officer? Ha! <laughs> you are an auxiliary officer. You have little authority over anyone, let alone a major. You would be wise to remember who is close friends with your commanding officer. After what I have heard of your past in the city, I'm sure he would look upon today's events as another failure at the hands of Officer Poirot. Oui, Major. Now I suggest you do your duty and escort the maidservant to the station where she can be formally charged and a sufficient punishment handed out. Right away. I'm sorry, mademoiselle. This is not the outcome I expected. Maman was right. We'll always pay the price for the upper class's actions. We will do everything we can to clear your name. What can you do now? Madame said I'm guilty of a crime and I'll be punished. That's that. A crime that was never committed. Once the truth is explained, this wrong shall be set right. Angeline did not intend for you to be arrested. Surely you know her better than that. I should have known better than to expect anything else. Justice and fairness don't reach the likes of me. What you saw today was not justice. In the eyes of the law, you are innocent and had been harshly treated and wrongly accused. No one will be going to jail. But that doesn't help my employment, does it? That I cannot save. But your freedom, I shall make sure of that. Thank you. 